Namaste and welcome to Indian Diplomacy, show about uh, India's foreign relations, India's big impact on the world, India's engagement with different regions and countries around the world and how India is trying to shape a world order that is equitable, just, beneficial to all sides and of course advancing its own core national interests. Viewers, uh, this episode we are looking at India's backyard, the Indian Ocean region. The Indian Ocean region encompasses nearly 40 countries along its littoral. 40% of the world's population resides uh, in the Indian Ocean region. It's a vast uh, waterway that's very significant for commercial activity, uh, for maritime trade, and also geostrategically important with uh, important choke points uh, from which uh, countries vie for influence. Uh, Indian Ocean region, you cannot exaggerate the importance of this uh, space for India. And India geographically, historically uh, and culturally has been at the core of the Indian Ocean region. So today we are going to talk about India's strategy in the Indian Ocean region, how it has been evolving and uh, what impact it is having on all these littoral spaces uh, around it. Uh, from the east coast of Africa and the Horn of Africa and the uh, Gulf uh, all the way to the Straits of Malacca in Southeast Asia, this vast space, we are going to be talking about the Indian Ocean region in all its dimensions. And uh, taking us through this um, voyage is uh, Dr. Sri Radha Datta. Let me introduce you to her. Uh, Dr. Datta is a senior fellow at the Vivekananda International Foundation, an important think tank in India. And uh, she's also fellow at the National University of Singapore. Uh, thank you, Dr. Datta. Thank you for joining us on this show. It's been a pleasure. Pleasure for me too. Um, Dr. Datta, when you talk of Indian Ocean region, uh, two-thirds of the oil supplies of the world pass through this and you know the statistics don't lie it's just uh, such an important region right a crucial waterway and uh, how do you think India has seen the Indian Ocean and our vision of this region how have we tried to shape it uh, and uh, what are our stakes in this uh, important uh, maritime domain you know the primacy of Indian Ocean has re emerged and we see this in you know during the Cold War and the post Cold War the interest in the you know the areas kind of seemed elsewhere we were looking at other uh, points of interest. But now as we see it uh, of course for as you mentioned the trade the energy trade and a lot of our cargo is huge amount uh, bulk movement takes place through this. So obviously the sea lines of communication in the Indian Ocean region keeping it open keeping it free and you know peaceful communication is important for us. So that was always there. So the Indian Navy always had an interest there. But as of now we see politically diplomatically and apart from that huge economic dimension Indian Ocean has really uh, is part of the f I would say the frontier effort of Indian diplomatic efforts just now. Mm -hmm. And uh, the notion of a region, uh, this is different from uh, just bilateral, I mean there are 40 countries all along spread around this vast expanse. But the way we deal with them, it is not just a one on one, but also with a sense of shaping the broader geoeconomic and geopolitical space. Uh, which is rimmed by the water. So, that uh, regional approach, you know, or sub regional approach, I think has been a very critical thing to the way we have been dealing with uh, this IOR. So, your thoughts on how we approach it as a region, no, not just uh, uh, on a one on one basis. Yeah, so exactly what you said, we we are part of the Indian Ocean region cooperation, we are part of BIMSTEC. And but again, in the recent years, we have seen there is a lot of and of course, uh, ever since Prime Minister Modi has taken over, uh, I think there is again a huge effort to kind of revive those engagements. And uh, if you look at the Indian Ocean, really India has a kind of diplomatic engagement which none other power, I mean mm -hmm. there are US has an engagement, US, France, of late we have seen UAE having some interest in the Indian Ocean, but none the way India has. And Prime Minister Narendra Modi uh, talks about our common maritime home and uh, his vision for the IOR has always been one where we advance regional cooperation with uh, all the key countries and to use Indian capabilities and capacities to assist uh, the other member countries of the IOR region who uh, will benefit from Indian support. Uh, viewers, I have a, a speech uh, for you for, by Prime Minister Modi which he delivered at um, the inauguration of uh, Indian Naval Submarine Kalwari in December 2017, 
where he laid out his vision of Sagar, security and growth for all in the region for the IOR. Let's listen in and continue the discussion. Sathiyo, kaha jata hai ki 21vi sadi Asia ki sadi hai. Ye bhi tae hai ki 21vi sadi ke vikas ka rasta Hind Mahasagar se ho kar ke hi niklega. और इसलिए हिंद महासागर की हमारी सरकार में की नीतियों में एक विशेष उसका स्थान है विशेष जगह है ये अप्रोच हमारे विजन में झलकती है मैं इसे एक स्पेशल नाम से भी उल्लेख करता हूं सागर एस ए जी ए आर और जब मैं सागर कहता हूं यानी कि Security and growth for all the region, Sagar. हम हिंद महासागर में अपने वैश्विक, सामरिक और आर्थिक हितों को लेकर पूरी तरह सजग हैं, सतर्क हैं, और इसलिए भारत की मॉडर्न और मल्टीडाइमेंशनल नौसेना पुर पूरे क्षेत्र में शांति के लिए स्वायत्तों के लिए आगे बढ़कर के नेतृत्व कर रही है। जिस तरह भारत की राजनीतिक और आर्थिक मैरिटाइम पार्टनरशिप बढ़ रही है, क्षेत्रीय फ्रेमवर्क को मजबूत किया जा रहा है, उससे इस लक्ष्य की प्राप्ति और आसान नजर आती है साथियों समुद्र में निहित शक्तियों हमें राष्ट्र निर्माण के लिए आर्थिक शक्ति प्रदान करती है और इसलिए भारत उन चुनौतियों को लेकर भी गंभीर है जिनका सामना भारत ही नहीं बल्कि इस क्षेत्र के अलग-अलग देशों को भी करना पड़ता है, चाहे समुद्र के रास्ते आने वाला आतंकवाद हो, पायरेसी की समस्या हो, ड्रग्स की तस्करी हो, भारत इन सभी चुनौतियों से निपटने में महत्वपूर्ण भूमिका निभा रहा है। सबका साथ सबका विकास यह हमारा मंत्र जल थल नभ में भी एक ही समान है पूरे विश्व को एक परिवार मानते हुए वसुधैव कुटुंबकम की भावना को आगे बढ़ाते हुए भारत अपने वैश्विक उत्तरदायित्वों को लगातार निभा रहा है भारत अपने साथी देशों के लिए उनके संकट के समय फर्स्ट रिस्पोंडर बना हुआ है और इसलिए जब श्रीलंका में बाढ़ आती है तो भारत की नौसेना तत्परता से मदद के लिए सबसे पहले पहुंच जाती है जब मालदीव में पानी का संकट आता है, तो भारत से जहाज भर भर के पानी तत्काल पहुंचाया जाता है। जब बांग्लादेश में चक्रवात आता है, तो भारत की नौसेना बीच समंदर में फंसे बांग्लादेशियों को बाहर निकाल करके लाकर के मानवता का काम करती है। you as uh, Prime Minister of India laying out a uh, broad vision for Indian leadership of the IOR. And uh, Dr. Datta, uh, Prime Minister Modi has talked about many things, uh, our stakes in the IOR and also what we are doing. And one of the points he made, uh, stark illustrations of crisis and how we have been the first responder. 
So this humanitarian uh, assistance and uh, disaster relief HADR as it's called, yeah. uh, search and rescue SAR, all these functions, uh, India has really taken the lead in yeah. this region and uh, our Navy actually is involved uh, in the high seas to enable other countries who have lesser capacities and to be able to, you know, uh, create safe, safe spaces, you know, for commerce and for trade to grow. So that provision of public goods, that's what India seems to be doing. Yeah. And uh, this HADR aspect in particular, I think, uh, conveys a message that India is ready to shoulder more responsibilities, right? Like that's what Prime Minister uh, is saying. Absolutely. And I think over the years we've seen, you know, given the kind of activities in which Prime Minister Modi just mentioned, that whenever there is any humanitarian climate issues or any other natural disasters, mm -hmm. India is the first one to reach. So not only are they able to, they do they have the capacity, the wherewithal. That's the first thing. We have that. Mm -hmm. And then also our intentions to be there right on top of it and help and uh, as you I think in this whole space India probably you know is recognized as uh, not only one of the largest economy really but also somebody who has that intention of you know kind of you know look, taking care together. Uh, it seems uh, Dr. Datta that you know we used to lack this maritime mindset I mean there was yeah, this yeah. criticism that uh, India is very continental and that uh, all we historically have looked at uh, invaders coming from the northwest and then subsequently the land border dispute with China. So as a result of which uh, there has been this orientation uh, away from the ocean but looking at the last vast coastline we have 7500 uh, kilometers uh, of coastline the peninsular India and the interest that we have I think what you are saying is that we have now finally uh, thank God we finally have a maritime uh, outlook and uh, mindset in our strategic uh, approach because earlier like you said it was patchwork or it was just one-on-one -on -one and we really uh, never thought of the ocean as that important uh, and control of the seas and stability in the in the seas around us uh, I think we are paying greater attention to it uh, there is no doubt about that. In fact, if you look at, you know, we also have a center which uh, uh, manages the, you know, controls, I mean, not controls, is, uh, surveys the uh, weather movement mm -hmm. and has been able to, you know, s you know give. We have the fusion center also. Yeah, 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 yeah. which is Indian able Ocean. Indian Ocean fusion center. Uh, of course, there's a talk about making that the BIMSTEC center because all the BIMSTEC countries are, you know, part of this and we've been able to kind of engage with them, ensure that everybody's information is actual time basis, mm -hmm. which has been a very, very useful uh, element in terms of our engagement with them because uh, this place we know is, you know, we have immense amount of natural calamities and things like that. So, it is about time that we kind of you know focus on that and as I said earlier uh, you know Sagar of course is a policy which has been very robustly implemented here but look at the multilateral exercises we do Malabar exercises we mm -hmm. do a lot of petrol combat also in the region we have a lot of bilateral exercises too so you know Singapore Sri Lanka these are kind of involvement that has happened it was there earlier in bits and pieces now there is a real I would say a kind of a architecture that's growing becoming mm -hmm. there and I think BIMSTEC again and IORC uh, plays a critical role in you know looking at it again holistically it was earlier keeping your cargo movement your trade ensuring the peaceful movement of that but now we realize that the engagement has to be at various levels and I think mm. uh, it's been a very strong message conveyed in the last few years that we really want to walk the talk so uh, we are also convening others the Indian Ocean Rim Association that Dr. Datta is talking about uh, is of course the pan Indian Ocean Organization with uh, 23 member countries and many observers and uh, India has been uh, driving force for the IORA and uh, this uh, organization has gone from strength to strength uh, yeah, we of course the focus is on uh, also not just on security but also on uh, economic cooperation on developing tourism on fisheries on uh, marine conservation uh, Dr. Datta was just mentioning the environmental calamities uh, and the rising sea levels so small island nations Many of them are uh, spread across the IOR and uh, their security has a special environmental uh, dimension and that also India is trying to assist. Uh, Dr. Datta on the blue economy concept, I mean that is another area uh, which prime is part of the uh, security and growth for all in the region and the blue economy developing this, we have also uh, domestically done major changes to our port environment 
all along. It's called the Sagar Mala yeah. uh, project to improve uh, logistics and uh, transportation from the hinterland of India to the coast and from the coast connecting to all our major partner countries yeah. uh, from East Africa all the way to Southeast Asia. So that uh, synergy, uh, the Sagar Mala and the Sagar, uh, you know, approach to the whole region, those two seems to be seem to have been well thought out because earlier uh, it was all haphazard and now it looks like there is a plan and India wants to be also the economic centerpiece of the revival and the uh, resurgence of this whole region. Uh, clearly so because if you look at the way we are developing our own ports mm. uh, you know there's been a huge again we, we, we realize that while I mean this government is of course known for the kind of transportation uh, cor corridors and network and, yeah. that has developed uh, look at the South Asia sub region mm. uh, the kind if I mean we just begin with India and Bangladesh and I know that's going to develop into a much larger cobweb. Uh, this time at the uh, BIMSTEC summit in Colombo we've agreed on a MOU for you know the transportation connectivity plan which is again connecting to the larger Indian Ocean way of Bengal uh, region. The kind of focus attention that's happening for the blue economy not only for India but I think we've given a message that it's for every island nation we are happy to be part of that and I think uh, I, I think the mantra from Mr. Modi has has been about how you kind of grow with each other. Absolutely. So that's, that's, that's uh, something which is, you know, pretty much reflected in many of the initiatives that India is taking. We grow together. We also uh, defend together. Um, viewers, uh, I have a special video message from uh, uh, Commodore Anil Jay Singh. He is at the Indian Maritime Foundation, a former Indian Navy officer, about the geostrategic challenge of China and how India is responding to it in the Indian Ocean. Listen in. From a traditional perspective, the great power competition presently being played out mainly in the South China Sea and the Western Pacific is heating up. China is building a formidable blue water navy at an unprecedented pace. Since its maritime geography is unfavorable to its ambitions, it will need greater sea room to flex its maritime muscle. The Indian Ocean not only gives it the space, but also provides it access to the Atlantic Ocean. Initi initiatives like the Belt and Road and its aggressive maritime diplomacy in the Indian Ocean have a deep underlying strategic intent. The frequent deployment of research ships in the Indian Ocean is also part of this. It is therefore imperative for India to maintain a favorable maritime situation in the region at all times and build a commensurate maritime capability. It should be able to shape the outcomes in the Indian Ocean from a position of strength and not allow itself to be shaped by them. A governance the deficit, internal strife and economic deprivation amongst many countries in the Indian Ocean littoral, coupled with the ex existential threat to some due to the effects of climate change, make them very vulnerable to inimical external influences which also undermine regional security. India has rightly taken a leadership role in mitigating these challenges through inclusive and cooperative multi-sectoral capacity building initiatives across the Indian Ocean littoral and in the strategically located island states. These are encapsulated in the Sagar Doctrine, an acronym for security and growth for all in the region. The Navy has also established a robust maritime domain awareness capability in the Indian Ocean through multilateral efforts with other navies, including frequent bilateral and multilateral exercises for enhancing interoperability and developing a shared understanding of the regional security imperatives. Information sharing mechanisms like the Indian Ocean Region Information Fusion Center located in Gurugram have further enhanced the regional MDA capability. Indian naval ships on multi-mission deployments across the length and breadth of the Indo-Pacific are often the first responders in a humanitarian crisis. While it is active in promoting regional security in regional multilateral institutions, like the Indian Ocean Rim Association or BIMSTEC. It has also established the Indian Ocean Naval Symposium to promote naval synergy in the region. The country is also promoting blue economy initiatives and battling for the smaller countries in important global forums like the UN Security Council and the G20. These are all attempts to establish a robust Indian Ocean security architecture. All these initiatives had led India to be mandated as a net security provider in the region. However, the Navy was never comfortable with this term as it was neither well understood nor well explained. And the current term preferred security partner 
seems more apt and more suitable. So India definitely has its task cut out in ensuring regional maritime security in the years to come and its stature as an Indian Ocean power will demand that it proves more than equal to that task. Viewers, uh, Commodore Anil J. Singh talking about India as a preferred security partner. Dr. Datta, uh, the Chinese challenge cannot be denied and uh, they have been trying to intrude deeper and deeper, reach all the way up to the Atlantic via the Indian Ocean and uh, of course they have the Belt and Road Initiative and uh, they throw around a lot of loans uh, to try and capture strategic spaces. We have seen what happened to Hamban Thota in Sri Lanka for example, Kyao Pyu in Myanmar. Um, and Gwadar in Pakistan and further afield all the way up to Djibouti they have established a military base now. Now the challenge for India is clear right because we want to keep this open and, uh, and in a way this also becomes part of the Indo-Pacific which is a larger domain that includes the Western Pacific and combines it with the Indian Ocean. Yeah. So this whole region um, Commodore Jaising was talking about vulnerable countries which are financially in trouble or which have fallen into the debt trap and uh, how we are dealing with them. So your thoughts on our strategy in pushing back, how exactly are we doing it and what else needs to be done? Uh, Let us you know, start with two island nations, uh, Maldives and Sri Lanka. Mm -hmm. Small nations uh, dependent on external support. Uh, we have seen in Maldives that they were going s down the same lane in terms of debt issues, whole lot of infrastructure projects that initiated. Some of course very well completed, it has been very beneficial, this is not to say that the some of the Chinese, but they overdid it in mm. the sense. So, mm. it was really going into that crevice. Uh, thankfully, the change of you know premiership with President Soli coming in, there was a kind of a step back and we have seen how India has come in so strongly. Mm -hmm. And I am not saying this is a reaction to Chinese uh, involvement in the engagement. There is also a capacity and wherewith all. We, we can never compete with the kind of deep pockets and the systems that they have. I mean, we have far more procedural issues that we follow. So, in our engagement in South Asia in Indian Ocean, of course, has been limited because of our capacities at times. Mm -hmm. But recently, I mean, the Maldives experience has been fabulous because we have been able to complete all our projects on time. Yeah. We have actually the whole idea is to not only work government to government which we are doing very well in all of these uh, island nations or the you know sub region or the region but let the people also understand that what india is able to deliver for them where it's china there's a deep contrast in the way they handle matters mm. and i think that is not lost on any one of them the recent case of sri lanka i think is very very obvious and while even today i would say there is a tendency for sri lanka in this particular case and i i'm also true for some that you're running with the hare and hounding with you know with the yeah, they want to have options that's yes, okay which is but absolutely India okay is which is absolutely showing that okay. it's different and distinct yes yeah. and your delivery mechanisms have you know I become much more effective now mm -hmm. earlier there was always a kind of a India doesn't deliver, they say, which is we have changed that face front that mm -hmm. we are able to now implement many of these policy that we have you know promised to deal with. So, I think China will do what they do as, as I said every nation has their own purpose and reason, but I think what India's intentions are. Uh, through this, whether the, the neighborhood policy, whether through the sub regional and again, you know, uh, the, the whole engine of growth that India is now able to position itself as. Mm -hmm. And I do not think any nation wants to be left out of that. And as I we discussed it earlier, that India has positioned itself um, not only geographically, but diplomatically, politically, military as a very, very strong nation in the region. And, and, and Dr. Datta, talking of security aspect, I mean, um, um, the National Security Advisor, Mr. Doval, for example, has been doing this triangular uh, dialogue with yeah. the Maldives and Sri Lanka. Yeah. And uh, we have similar such uh, trilateral uh, and plurilateral initiatives going on. Some are with the Quad countries and France has also come in yeah. and France has a significant presence, has become a major partner of India in the IOR. Uh, there is also, uh, we are doing with Australia and with uh, Indonesia. So, uh, clearly uh, like you are saying there is a purpose and we are actually showing a greater will and determination now to defend these spaces and to not allow them to be as uh, Commodore was saying inimical forces yeah. to take uh, to exploit uh, the vulnerabilities and the weaknesses and try to come in and then create a you know a mess out here. So, I think uh, we are taking that uh, we are willing to shoulder the burden of leadership and responsibility more and especially these uh, small group 
uh, defense diplomacy that we are doing now yeah. that seems to be uh, an innovation yes i mean i think if i look at the various engagement i probably suggest that there is a security architecture which is appearing this is something we've been always inhibited from you know being part of but we really believe that there is a security platform where all of us need to work together i mean that is core right if your security interests are not addressed the rest of it doesn't mm. appear so you can't be saying that okay i'll engage with you economically while you know somebody else will uh, be you have security have a concerns. Uh, yes. Yeah. So I think whether and I, I keep using the word BIMSTEP because it's a kind of sub region within includes many of the Indian Ocean Islands and there's a larger you know network that's developing. It's like a cobweb which is now developing and I think that is clear that no country, no partnership should happen uh, because they are pushed into it but because they genuinely believe that it's beneficial for them and each one has their back i think that is mm. a core interest here that i am not going to be a security threat for anybody else and i think india has very clearly conveyed that and, and uh, last word uh, dr datta we are almost out of time the point is um, extra regional powers uh, U.S. Uh, India partnership, uh, maritime dimension, Indian Ocean, they have a joint uh, sh shared vision for Indian Ocean. With France, we have declared one, uh, even the UK to a lesser extent. We are now more open to these kind of partnerships because it's part of our rebalancing effort to create a multipolar Asia yeah. and not to allow uh, you know, some kind of a vast Chinese lake to develop in this whole space. So I think now we are uh, geopolitically more astute and uh, awake at the wheel and uh, your thoughts on how that's going you know bringing in uh, extra regional powers which are friendly to us and with whom we are willing to now do more interoperability more joint exercises and also more patrolling and more show of force you know that's necessary uh, on the part of the big powers to be able to deter adversaries you know india is a classic example of how you can engage with a variety and all hues of uh, you know nations so while Indian Ocean is often very for our purpose divided into Eastern Indian Ocean and the Western and we belong to the Western Hemisphere so we kind of look at it more closely but every all of these powers that you mentioned whether it's uh, US whether it's uh, France whether it's UK they've always had a kind of enduring interest in the Indian Ocean mm -hmm. for again a variety of reasons this again as a the whole emergence of Indian Ocean has again happened re in recent decade I would say and India works closely with all of them so there's no reason why India will not have uh, you know partner movements with them in the sense you know I, I think the point that Komodo made about how India is not comfortable being the net security provider that's a term I think was used by US first and then we realized that partnership is something that we want and mm -hmm. the kind of security dialogues our national advisor as you mentioned the trilateral dialogue and other dialogues we've never seen that happen so at that very level so that's where I see that architecture happening Absolutely. and India I mean the only concern here is China and I think everybody has similar concerns I think that is also you know bringing us together. Remarkable isn't it viewers uh, Dr. Sriradha Datta just reminded us that barring China, nobody really objects to Indian leadership and this proactive role that India is taking in this uh, to s as a stewarding the entire Indian Ocean region. Uh, there are nearly 40 countries and all of them welcome uh, India's leadership and India's stance uh, and cooperative will uh, willingness to build co uh, webs of cooperation. So I think that's how that's the future of the Indian Ocean region and uh, we are uh, trying to put our best foot forward and uh, have a proactive presence and proactive uh, engagement with all the key stakeholders so that uh, uh, Prime Minister's vision of our common maritime uh, home is realized. Uh, so this region is fraught with conflicts. It is bound to be a theater for uh, major uh, global contestation. Uh, Robert Kaplan, the American uh, scholar, uh, said long ago that uh, Indian Ocean is going to be the deciding uh, venue for great power uh, contestation and uh, pole positioning in the international order in the 21st century. But we are up for the task and we are uh, not leaving any stone unturned. Dr. Sriradha Datta, thank you so much for enlightening the audience and thank for joining you. me today. Such a pleasure. Thank you. Uh, that's all we have for you viewers. Uh, keep thinking about uh, the Indian Ocean region, the Indo-Pacific, which is an extension of that, and uh, India's centrality to the development of this region. Until next time, take care.